Hello everyone, this is Saurian Target welcoming you to another Carnivore's discussion video, where today we are pitting the two most well-known Ceratopsians of the dinosaur planet against each other in a head-to-head -head showdown to determine who is better, Triceratops or Chasmosaurus. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll probably know that I am not too fond of the Chasmosaurus, despite its continued prominence in the recent surge of official Carnivore's content. But why do I think the Triceratops is better? Is it even better? That's what we're here to find out. So in today's episode, we're going to be discussing both Ceratopsians in full to determine which is superior. I know a lot of people, myself included, have some pretty partial leanings toward the trike, but let's put our biases aside and hear out the argument for both dinosaurs. Who knows? Maybe after this video, we'll all have a better appreciation for the Chasmosaurus. Or maybe not. So without further ado, let's begin. So we'll start off with some history about the two dinosaurs on planet FMMUV32, as well as a little more meta information along the way. The Triceratops was one of the first eight dinosaurs discovered on the dinosaur planet during the initial scouting expeditions, and was one of the original animals placed on the freshly formed Dino Hunt Corp's first hunting tour. The Triceratops was an advanced rank dinosaur, the only dangerous herbivore, capable of fighting back and earning its rank based on its size, temperament, raw power, and iconicity. One of the most recognizable and sought after dinosaurs on the tour, the Triceratops helped propel Dino Hunt Corp to immense critical and financial success. Until their second tour. With more finances comes more methods of exploration, and Dino Hunt Corp wasted no time in scouring every inch of their new gold mine of a planet for new islands and new dinosaurs for clients to hunt. As more and more islands were explored, it was discovered that many species of dinosaur present in the first chain of islands, like Parasaurolophus and Stegosaurus, were also found on other islands across the planet's central sector. However, the Triceratops was not among them. In its place was the Chasmosaurus, a smaller Ceratopsian that filled in the Triceratops' spot on Dino Hunt Corp's second hunting tour, and thus began the company's now famous dwindling success story. In 1998, a criminally underrated game was released that, in a way, redefined the hunting genre, Carnivores. A pioneer in many ways for both dinosaur and hunting games, carnivores put players on an immersive dinosaur safari, where they could hunt numerous dinosaurs on an alien planet, and one of those was the iconic Triceratops. With most of the dinosaurs inspired by the work of legendary paleoartist Zdeniek Burian, carnivores brought to life a wide array of iconic dinosaurs, filled with character and uniqueness. Then came Carnivores 2. Released in 1999, only one year after its predecessor, Carnivores 2 initially seems like the perfect sequel. Maps that are six times bigger, four new dinosaurs, three new weapons, the ability to hunt whatever you want with whatever you want at whatever time of day you want. Carnivores 2 lives up to the bigger is better effects of most sequels until you start digging into the details. Carnivores 2 feels more like an expansion pack than a full-fledged sequel. It perfected the Carnivores formula, for sure, but at the cost of a few things with some chinks in its armor, one of those being the Chasmosaurus. Literally a copy-and-paste job of the Triceratops, the Chasmosaurus was a less-than-ideal choice for a dinosaur hunting sequel, to say the least. Carnivores 2 was the first game in the series that I got, and even six-year-old me was pretty disappointed that Triceratops wasn't in the game, instead replaced by a cheap knockoff. But why? Why do I even use this terminology against a seemingly harmless member of the Carnivores universe? Let's break it down, starting with the design. As mentioned, the Triceratops is, along with most of the dinosaurs in the Carnivore series, based on the designs of legendary paleoartist Zdeniek Burian whose iconic illustrations brought dinosaurs to life in ways never seen before. As you can see here, the carnivore's Triceratops bears more than a passing glance resemblance to Mr. Burian's own Triceratops. From the coloration to the long head with the prominent jaw and teeth, to the short, rounded frill, the pebbly back armor, the long body, dragging tail, sprawled forelegs, and sturdy back legs. Mr. Burian's work was a key design point for the Carnivore's creative team, and in the Triceratops, it truly shows. 
Mr. Bergen's work has brought so many animals of planet FMMUV32 to life and gave them such character. The Triceratops is even animated around its design. It plods about its jungle home, scraping away dirt with its imposing nose horn and grinding food in its long jaws, just as its inspired artwork implies. Then there is the Chasmosaurus. Mr. Burian also illustrated Chasmosaurus based on 1900s information, with wicked horns, scooted armor, clawed feet, and an immense bladed frill. The Chasmosaurus more than stands out from the crowd with an impressive design, but not in Carnivores 2. The Carnivores dinosaurs are sometimes accused of just being generic, royalty-free models, especially in today's context by people who think the game is new. And that saddens me, but honestly, after studying the generic Chasmosaurus model, I can't blame them. The Chasmosaurus looks like an attempt to remedy the inaccuracy of the Triceratops model, not like a new, character-filled, and inspired dinosaur to add to the rich world of the dinosaur planet. It's soulless, generic, uninspired, and it feels more like a needless apology mixed with an attempt to cheaply boost numbers. In addition, it looks nothing like it should have, or even like a more up-to-date Chasmosaurus. It still has the Triceratops horns, the Triceratops frill, the shorter Triceratops tail. It's trying to be the Triceratops under a different name. And that's honestly a little disrespectful, both to Mr. Burian's Triceratops and Chasmosaurus. There's even a Triceratops on the inside cover of the Carnivores 2 box art, when the dinosaur does not appear in the game at all outside a phony imposter attempting to masquerade itself in as a new dinosaur. It's not even built like a new dinosaur, it's a literal copy and paste of the Triceratops, from the size statistics to the animations. I mean, just the way the nose horn is built, there's no way it can effectively serve its purpose facing that direction. There is nothing put into the Chasmosaurus to differentiate it from the Triceratops, which is a shame. However, and I'm so glad this timing worked out so perfectly for an unveiling, Master Modder Poharex has recently designed a beautiful new Chasmosaurus based on Mr. Burian's design. But due to the Chasmosaurus's already established place within the Carnivore's canon, this new creature has been dubbed Mojo Ceratops, a dinosaur genus often associated as a more mature growth stage of Chasmosaurus. Perfectly fitting. But does the Chasmosaurus have any redeeming qualities? Let's move into the calls. Of its criticisms, the most prominent complaints the Triceratops receives are its rather fat and lethargic build and its very odd call. To me, personally, it's always sounded like someone blowing their nose into a tissue, which gives a whole new meaning to John Hammond's one sick Triceratops. But the Chasmosaurus shook things up a bit with its call. Most, if not all, of the herbivores in the Carnivore series have soft, rumbling, echoic calls. Ones that feel gentle and somewhat comforting. But the Chasmosaurus call is a harsh, loud, and almost abrasive roar, and one that I quite like. It almost sounds carnivorous, and to me, sounds more intimidating than even the Allosaurus call. In fact, and in complete honesty here, the Chasmosaurus call might be my favorite one in all of Carnivores 2, right up there with the Ceratosaurus and the Velociraptor. It's mean, it's intimidating, and it fits in perfectly as an ambient cry on Mount Ravan. But it's easy to sit here and complain without offering any solutions. What could be done to remedy the Chasmosaurus problem? Well, aside from actually basing the design around Mr. Burian's work, I've brought up this particular idea before, but I think it's still relevant, so I'll bring it up again. I think Carnivores 2 should have kept the Pachycephalosaurus in the Ankylosaurus second herbivore slot, as it's already been added to Dinosaur Hunter, so there's no conflict of canon there. Or even if not the Pachycephalosaurus, perhaps another small to medium-sized, non-dangerous herbivore to take its place, like a prosauropod. Then, instead of adding the Chasmosaurus, Carnivores 2 introduces the Ankylosaurus in the game's dangerous herbivore slot as a bigger, slower, and more dangerous dinosaur. The Ankylosaurus could easily have taken the dangerous herbivore position. And what a great way that would have been to introduce Ankylosaurus to the dinosaur planet, and immediately differentiate Carnivores 2 from its predecessor. 
That way, the Pachycephalosaurus, my personal favorite dinosaur from the original carnivores, gets to return in the sequel, and the Ankylosaurus officially gets added to the lore in a memorable and defining way, and the Triceratops remains unblemished back in the C1 island chain, while Carnivores 2 nicely separates itself from the original by adding a new family of dangerous herbivores. But that's not what we got. What we did get was a classic interpretation of an iconic dinosaur, and then a shallow, wannabe knockoff. So there you go guys, the debate between Triceratops and Chasmosaurus within the Carnivore's universe rages on. Okay, maybe rages is too strong of a word, but I've staked my claim in the matter, where do you stake yours? Triceratops or Chasmosaurus? Which do you think is better, and why? I know there are a lot of Triceratops fans out there, so I'm curious. Who likes Chasmosaurus better? I'd love to hear your thoughts regardless of where you stand on the matter. It's always cool to see differing opinions, especially about dinosaurs. And guys, thanks as always for watching. 2,000 subscribers is amazing. And whether you've been here since 2 subs or 1,999, thanks for sticking around. It's been so cool to watch this little community grow. And that 1,000 subscriber special is nearing completion, so that means you can expect it within the next couple of months. Thanks again for watching guys, you are all truly the best. Be sure to let me know what you think of the Triceratops and Chasmosaurus, and I will see you guys next time. But guess who came back for the reboot? Not you, fool!